Here we are, ready to make block two of Poinsettia Winter. And these A through F pieces in the tree, those are paper pieced, so we're going to go through some basic paper piecing techniques. You need to photocopy your paper piece templates from the book. You'll need four copies of each page and then another copy for cutting templates and an add a quarter ruler. This is an add a quarter plus. It has the quarter inch um, groove on this side that you can trim your quarter inch seam with and then it's got a beveled edge on this side for folding and trimming. So I'll show you that in a little bit. And just to keep organized for ideas, I put each of my little parts and pieces in little baggies or with clips so you can keep them all organized. So I photocopied one more set, a fifth set of the paper piecing papers just on regular paper and cut them up so that I could keep track of all my little parts and pieces. When you are paper piecing, you're going to be sewing on the side with the lines, but you'll be building your block on the wrong side of the paper. So with piece number one, right here, it says piece one, and this was my A1 piece, I'm going to center it over my triangle section there, I can see through. By the way, I am using some water-soluble paper that I ran through my printer. Um, by Sulky, you can also just use regular paper or there's some other easy tear paper, but this one is water soluble. So when I wash it, it will disappear. And then to hold this piece in place, you can either pin it or you can use just a little dab of glue to hold it in place. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see it's a little bit crooked. Then we're going to flip this over. We're going to be adding piece two right here. So I'm going to use my add a quarter ruler. I'm going to put my beveled edge right on that line between one and two. I'm going to fold this back, slide my ruler out, give that a little press, flip my ruler over. Now that beveled edge is going to hook right there on my folded line and I'm going to trim that excess fabric off. Just like that. Okay, then this is my fabric two piece. It'll be going like that, except over here. It will end up like that. But we wanna put fabrics right sides together. Now, I will tell you what um, not to do. It You might think it goes like that, but if you sew right there, you're gonna end up with that. So you want it to be let me see if I can get this oriented right. It's going to end up like this. So it's going to be sewn like that and make like an L shape when you sew it. And you can just give it a little check by kind of folding it back to where about our quarter inch would be and see how it fits. So the other thing we want to check, oh, I want to point out too, right here, because we're paper piecing, our pieces don't have to be cut perfect. So don't get all stressed out about cutting things real perfect. The thing we do want to check though is when we lay this down and because we cut this at our quarter inch seam using our add a quarter, we can line that right up with our raw edge. Fold your piece back, the piece that you're adding, and you just want to do a little visual check and make sure that the piece of fabric that you're adding is covering our lines here on our paper template. And it's really close here and I got a lot here. so. I'm going to slide this piece down a little bit and give it another little test. I still have, well, actually this far over, it would probably get cut off, but I still have a lot more up here than down here. So I'm gonna slide it some more. Keep my raw edges aligned. Flip that back over. That looks a little better. That's pretty close. It's got some extra here, some extra on this side. So I am ready to sew this in place. So before I take it to the machine, again, I'm going to make sure my raw edges are aligned. And you can put a pin in here if you want to. You just want to be careful where you place your pin because you will be sewing on the other side of the paper. 
So I usually just hang on to it, just pinch it, hang on to it, make sure it doesn't move. And then when you flip it over and take it to your machine, you're going to sew on this line right here. And you want to start about three or so stitches beyond the line and end about three or so stitches beyond the end. So this white space out here is going to be our seam allowance when we join this big rectangle piece to its next piece. So I'm going to start sewing about here, sew right on that line and end about right there. Alrighty, I just sewed this line here on the paper side. When I flip this over, we're going to flip that newly added piece back. And usually I just give it a little finger press. This stylus tool has a little flat end on it that makes for a really nice pressing tool. So I'm going to use that and I'm just going to finger press that in place. You can also run it over to the iron and press it if you like. Now this is a pretty big piece and it's a little bit floppy over here. So I stuck a pin in it just to keep it in place so it's not wiggling around all over. I'm going to flip it over. Piece three is the next piece we're adding. So we're going to take our add a quarter bevel side right on the line. Fold that back. Slide our ruler out. Flip our ruler over. Put our beveled edge right on there and trim that excess fabric off. Okay, we are ready now to add piece three. Here's my piece number three. It is going to be going here, so it's going to flip up that way in a much shorter L shape. And we're going to do what we did before, line our raw edges up, do a little test fit. Oh, that's way off, so it needs to come way down. That looks pretty good, and as I look at this piece, here's something that might help. Here's the line of my paper template where I will be trimming it later, and here's the raw edge of my fabric. This gives me this much extra over here that's probably going to be a good placement for this piece so that when it folds back, it will cover that block right there. All right, so I'm going to Line it up nice and pretty. Hold it in place. Again, you can pin if you want to. Just be careful that you're not pinning over your stitching line. I'm going to flip it over, take it to my machine, and sew on that line right there. Here's this piece. We just added this piece. I folded it back, finger pressed it. Our next piece is piece number four. It's going to go right here. So we're going to sew it here. Again, making that L shape. Make sure at this point your fabrics are right sides together. And we're going to line this up. Again, I'm going to use that same trick that I did with the last piece. If, ow, just stab myself. If that point is beyond this line here, I think I should be okay. So I'm going to flip this back at about a quarter inch. That looks pretty good. It looks like it's going to cover. It does look like there's a little extra here, a little shy here. I could probably slide that down just a little bit. When I cut these, by the way, I did cut them with the extra half an inch. The pattern says an extra three eighths to a half inch. So I'm gonna take this over the machine. I'm gonna hold it in place, flip it over, and sew on my line again. All right, I just realized something really important that I need to point out. Actually, two things I need to point out. One is you want to reduce your stitch length to 1.5. That will make it much easier to tear the paper away, especially if you don't have water-soluble paper. If you have the water-soluble paper, it's not such a big deal. So when I took this over to my machine to sew it, what I noticed, and I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on the camera. There, that shows up better. This, where I can see my excess fabric from my line out to here, is way more than a quarter inch. I forgot to come in and trim away my piece number one at a quarter inch. So before I add piece two, I'm going to put my beveled edge on that line, fold my paper back, 
and right here is where I had stitched in. Let me show you that. I had stitched into my other seam allowance a little bit. So when I fold that back, I'm just going to give my fabric a gentle little tug there so that it pulls the thread out of that paper. And that way it'll be nice and flat. Give it a little press. Put my ruler on. Trim that off. Now I am ready to add, get it turned around here, add this piece on here. So it's going to go this way. Line it up. Flip it over. Make sure it's going to cover. Oh, see, we can go down quite a bit. That looks pretty good. I didn't fold it very straight, but that looks like it's going to fit just about right there. So straighten that back up. Again, if you like, you can pin here. Just be careful not to pin over your sewing line because that pin's going to be on the bottom side of where you're stitching. All right, I just sewed on piece number um, four. So, and I put a pin in to kind of hold it because it's long and kind of hangs out there and flip it over. I'm going to put my add a quarter right on that line. Fold it back. Ooh, I gotta slide this over. I'm gonna be off my mat. Flip my ruler over so that my whoops, quarter inch bevel is right there. Slice my excess off. And I'm ready to add that last piece number five. I've just finished sewing my last piece on. We are now ready to trim it. Usually if I have finger pressed these down, I will take this over to the iron and press it, give it a good press at this point. However, when I um, pressed this paper with my nice hot cotton iron, it scorched the paper. Now, eh, I don't really care because it's just the paper, but just something to be careful of. My fabric didn't scorch. I'm good with that. So this one's ready to be pressed. We're going to trim this one. So to trim it, you flip it over to the paper side. Make sure that any loose little edges are not tucked under or you're going to cut them off and be making a new block. And I don't pre I don't really like to use my add a quarter to trim this because there's not an edge for that beveled edge to hang on to. So I find it harder to use this ruler. So I usually just use one of my regular rulers that I cut with and I line it up nice and straight. My quarter inch is right on the inner line. I should move this so you can see. I'm gonna line up my quarter inch with here and cut here. So in theory, it should be right on that line when I cut it. Nice and straight. Cut that off. Now, my ruler wasn't quite as long as my block. I'm going to slide it down. Line that up again right on that line. Finish cutting that down the rest of the way, just like that. I'll trim the other three sides, here, here, and there, and then that block will be done. So you just need to um, continue on and make the rest of your foundation pieces that same way. The trickiest part about doing foundation paper piecing is remembering that when you add that first piece on here, piece number one, it goes on the wrong side of the paper and the wrong side of the fabric goes to the wrong side of the paper. Once you get that first piece either pinned or glued in place, then your fabric's gonna go right sides together just like normal.
I have one more little tip for you. When you get ready to trim this off, so we're going to flip our add a quarter over and put it on that fold. Don't push on it too hard. If you push on it too hard this way, it's going to skew your block. So when you place it down, you just want to push it up next to that fold, but don't push it too hard. Just lay it next to that fold before you trim that edge off.